Hey everyone, it's Aaron from WPKB and in this video we're going to take you through tax options in WooCommerce. Obviously this is kind of a detailed video, it's going to impact how your store operates and whatever you learn in here you'll need to apply to your individual country's requirements. So here we are in the dashboard looking at WooCommerce settings and then tax and tax options. And this is where the, the bulk of the settings for tax are. The rest are all reasonably straightforward. So what we'll do is get started here. The first thing we want to do is enable taxes and tax calculations. Secondly, you need to decide if you want to enter prices inclusive of tax or exclusive of tax, which once again will be up to you and whatever way is easiest to manage it for your country and its requirements. Then we can calculate the tax based on a few different things. We can go to the customer shipping address, billing address, or the shop base address. Using the customer shipping address is generally the standard uh, because depending on where you ship to, the customer may not actually have to pay tax. Then we get to choose the customer's default address. As you can see, it'll be the shop base address. Alternatively, you can change it to no address. It's only going to be in there until the customer actually submits what their address is anyway, so it doesn't really matter what you choose there. Next we get to choose the shipping tax class. This controls what tax class shipping will receive, or you can leave it so that it's based on the actual card itself. And you can see you've got standard reduced rate, zero rate, or just the default of leaving it shipping tax class based on cart items, which is certainly the default. Next you get to choose how you want to round the tax. Do you want to do it at a subtotal level? So just at the checkout when everything's been already input, or alternatively, you can choose to do it per line, so per item more or less. Just below this, we get to create some additional tax classes if you want. Now, as you can see up here, those are already in their reduced rate and zero rate. So if you wanted to create more tax classes, you can just simply go new tax class and then hit save and you'll see it in this little drop down there. Just as we move down, you get to choose how prices are displayed in the shop. Here you can see it's excluding tax, so if that's how you like to do it or how you can do it in your country, that's fine. Alternatively, you may wish to choose including tax. Next, there is the price display suffix. So this is just the text that will be shown after the price. So what you could say is includes tax or something to that effect, anything that you think will be helpful. Then we just get to choose how prices are displayed during the cart and checkout process. It says here there'll be, and this is the default by the way, displayed excluding tax. So if you wanna change it to including, you can do that very, very easily. And the same also applies with display tax totals. It can be as a single total or itemized. Itemized is the default. It's probably best to leave it on that so there is no confusion about what tax is being charged for what item. When you're done making changes there, of course, hit save changes. And then we get to move on to standard rates. This is where you can set up the tax rates for the standard class. It's very, very, very straightforward. You can see here that if you want to put it in, you just click insert row. Alternatively, you can import a CSV file. Obviously, you can also export a CSV file as well. So if you're moving from store to store, you can set up the same tax rules for that. So we'll just insert a row now. So let's just do Australia for this one. The country code is AU. The state code will be, well, we'll just choose Victoria for this one. The postcode will just set to 3000. Uh, that city is Melbourne. And the rate of tax uh, we'll put in as 10%. It's a goods and services tax, so that's why it is GST. We'll leave the priority as one. Uh, if you wanted to find multiple tax classes for one area, then you can, but you just need to set them to a different priority. Then you also need to choose, is it a compound tax rate? Now that means if you have a state and federal tax, you would most likely need to check that box. So the taxes are applied appropriately to that particular purchase. And then also you get to choose if you want to tax the shipping. Uh, obviously this is going to vary country to country, but once you know what you need to do, you can just make those changes and hit save. And that's done, that's been applied. So that will go through and affect all people buying products that live or want delivery to uh, this particular area. Thereafter, you can see we have reduced rate, zero rate taxes and new tax class, which is just one that we made as a demonstration before. The process is exactly the same as what we just did there for setting up standard rates. So we're not going to go through the rest of these because, you know, as mentioned, it is exactly the same to set up. It just needs to be set up based on your store's requirements uh, so that it is compliant with your country's tax requirements. So hopefully that's a good primer in setting up your tax options in WooCommerce. Of course, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to ask in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, 
please hit subscribe for more.